Okay, everyone, welcome to the How to Podcast series. I have a fellow podcaster in, and uh, she got a great new show. It's Fabric of Folklore, up to six episodes so far at the time of recording. And Vanessa Rogers is here with me today. We'll be talking about her show and talking about podcasting. Lots of great stuff. Vanessa, welcome to the podcast. Nice to have you here. Hi, thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate you having me on the show. I'm excited. So this is cool because this is not an interview. For everyone listening, this is not an interview. We're your co-hosts together. We're in this together, helping each other out, having a conversation, and including you as a listener to be part of the conversation. So welcome to Vanessa and I having a conversation. Please pull up a chair. You're welcome to join us. (laughs) Vanessa, tell us about your podcast right off the top. Let's plug, plug, plug. Well, um, okay, so it's named Fabric of Folklore, and I named it uh, Fabric of Folklore because it's really about um, the threads that make up folklore. So I'm, I'm really wanting to get at the origins of what makes folklore uh, tick. So I was always reading stories like folk tales to my kids, and um, I always kind of felt um, at the end like, I wanted to know more about what was going on, what the meaning and the significance and the importance of these stories were and um, how it was interpreted by the people during the time that it was being told. And I just felt like there was so much more depth behind just the, you know, the surface level story that I really wanted to better understand. And so that was really where um, I came up with the the concept of the story because folklore is a really popular topic right now. And there's a lot of podcasts out there that have folklore stories and they're really great. And, you know, they, they're really captivating because they really are in the storytelling mode. And I love that. But mine is more about like diving deep underneath and trying to better understand what they're about. So are you like a history buff then? You like I uh, am all not. The history? Really? No, okay. No. Talk to me about that. Um, so my background is communication studies. That was what my uh, bachelor degree is in, is communication studies. So I always really felt um, comfortable with communication in general. I felt like one of my biggest strengths was having a conversation with people and being able to uh, have a deeper conversation with people. Like when I'm at a, a party, um, I'm able to ha- to have, uh, you know, a lot of times those parties you have really surface level conversations like, you know, about fashion or or, or I don't know the weather, yeah. <laughs> but I feel like I'm better suited for deeper conversations. That's just where my mind goes, and so I always kind of gravitate towards people who also want to have those deeper conversations, even if I've just met them. So it's just um, kind of my personality. And sometimes it's off-putting and sometimes people really like it. It just really depends on the the, the person that I'm speaking to. Because some people feel like I'm getting a bit too personal when I just have met you. But I just feel like it's, if I am going to be friends with you, I want to, you know, know who you are. Um, and so after my initial after I graduated from college I did a lot of traveling and so I really love um learning about cultures and I think that's where I kind of got the uh understanding the the idea about understanding behind you know the languages or the folk tales or the dances what does it have what meaning does it have and so um I did a little, like, just a personal blog. It was mostly just a blog just for my fr- friends and family while I was traveling. And I did a lot of, like, researching things about what I was learning about um, while I was traveling and just talking about it. And it was not for, you know, the general public. Uh, um, it was just, like, things that I was just interested in. And so um, I'm not necessarily a history buff, but I do enjoy history. Um, and I would not say that I would have gone into history because I feel like history historians really like dates and, um, names of people and places. And I really am more into the story element. So I would see myself in more of the cultural anthropologist area. Um, my, I do have a master's degree in, um, it's an MBA with an international focus. So after I did a lot of traveling, um, I thought it would be a useful tool to have a you know, a background in, um, business, but with an international twist because, you know, everybody in the world is starting to intermingle in their business and it's just, 
a better idea to have an understanding of how different countries and people have relationships with one another because if you are um, doing business with a Russian, they're not going to have the same type of conversation and they're, they're right. going to go into the room with a completely different mindset of how you're going to sit down and have a conversation, whereas Americans would do it, you know, they have a culture. Um, so that's a really important element in business. So I guess it's just kind of an intermingling of different interests. Uh, and so, yeah, I can't even remember what your question was. What was your question? <laughs> I love it. No, it's good. <laughs> oh, perfect. Well done. Tell me, take me back to the beginning of your podcast um, before you had your very first episode recorded. Take me back to the early days of uh, your planning and putting together the idea for your podcast. What were some of the hardest things for you to kind of overcome or learn in the very beginning days that might help somebody listening today that they're struggling maybe with the same thing? Yeah. Um, I was really lucky because I found someone. Um, so I, I did a lot of researching. I'm, um, I really like researching before I jump into anything. So I did researching for a couple of years before I jumped into uh, podcasting and I, um, kind of played around with different ideas because I had had an idea to do a podcast for a while and I changed different ideas about what I wanted to do and what niche area I wanted to go into. Um, and so, uh, I found, uh, I have a producer who has some background. And so that was really helpful um, because he had a lot of knowledge. So I, I we agreed on a lot of things that I had already done research on. So I, I knew that I wanted to have a website um, to start off with. And I had some background in building a website. So I, that w that wasn't very scary to me, but um, it could be for other people. But for other people who are out there who are, you know, thinking about th those types of things, a website today is so much easier to build than it was just five years ago because they have, um, they, they lay it out. If you do, um, they just have custom templates that just make it so much easier. You don't really have to know coding. Um, you don't have to co know coding at all. Uh, so it's really kind of cut and paste. It, it makes it so much easier. But I, um, so it was just kind of like getting all of the, the ducks in a row. Because there, there are really a lot of elements and some people just jump in and they just put their, their podcast out there and then, and then they build. I wanted to build first and then put my podcast out there. So I, I think it really just depends on, on where your mindset is and understanding what it is you're building your podcast towards and what it is you're wanting to do. Because if you're just wanting to do a podcast for podcasting sake, then I would just say just jump in and do it and then learn as you're, as you go. Right. Because there's no, um, you know, it, you, you can, you can be a learner and, and keep getting better as you're, as you're doing it. Cause a lot of times people don't necessarily go back to all of your first episodes. Um, right. but I, I, I like to have the, the foundation. So we had the, we had to build the business and then, uh, not, not the business, the website, and then um, the Facebook page and the Facebook group and try and figure out what you do with each of those and then figuring out what social media platforms you want to be on because social media, you can be on all of them and you can be stretched entirely way too thin. And right. so you have to really figure out where you're going to focus your energies because if you focus your energies on everything, then you're just going to, you know, you're going to flop. So you really have to just find those spaces where you can focus those energies and then um, build those up and then figure out if you want to expand or not. But I would definitely not try and spread yourself so thin that you're not making a dent anywhere. Awesome. So you mentioned the website. What is the website for your podcast? It's www.fabricoffolklore.com. Smart. Um, yeah. That's easy. <laughs> Pretty simple. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. So I would just, my, my initial to anyone who is listening who's thinking about starting a podcast is first understand your why why are you doing this what are you doing it for are you just doing it for fun then just do it yeah. right if you if you have a larger goal in mind then keep that in mind as you're doing it and then figure it out towards that goal awesome so before we hit record we kind of discuss some of the things we might want to talk about today we'll kind of see where the conversation goes but maybe talking today about growing our audience maybe some monetization avenues, yeah. uh, just growth in general, and even interaction with our listeners. Mm -hmm. So out of that list, where would you like to start? What would you like to talk about first? 
Uh, we could do interaction with listeners because that is one thing that we, um, you know, we have a Facebook page and what we've determined is the Facebook page is for putting official things out. So putting your, the website, um, link, putting the YouTube link, doing the blog posts to the Facebook page, whereas the Facebook group is for the interaction. Obviously, there's a commenting capability on the Facebook page, but the Facebook group is intended so that people can post themselves, right? They can make, they can make suggestions for who they want. Um, if they have a link to some cool article that is related to folklore, um, they can definitely add that there. So it's the Facebook group is for people. Uh, um, to kind of own on their own and kind of help to inform us where they want the podcast to go. So, so far we haven't, um, seen a ton of interaction and, you know, part of that is just a learning curve. I, I think, um, what have you seen in your, uh, in your experience that has really gotten people to communicate with you or with each other? Because yeah. it's not really just about communicating with us. It's about communicating with one another. Nice. And that's a great idea for community. I love the idea that you can have somewhere for your your listeners to hang out. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, because, yeah. you know, podcasting is kind of a one-way thing where you, or you make an episode, you send it out, somebody listens to it, done. But how do you then get that feedback back? Mm -hmm. So we need to understand and recognize that not every single person on Facebook even knows what a podcast is. Mm -hmm. So... That's a little bit of a learning curve for some of the people that are there. They're not active podcast listeners. Mm -hmm. So when we get on there and say, hey, everyone, come check out episode six. And my guest, here's the information. Some people look at that and go, Vanessa, I don't know what a podcast is. Yeah. I, I have no idea what that is. Right? So, I had to download a podcasting app for my mom. And she, she didn't know. <laughs> yeah, right. So just keep that in mind that not everybody on any social media platform is actually an active podcast listener. Mm -hmm. So I would say to complement your Facebook group is to advertise where the podcast listeners already are because mm -hmm. you don't have to educate them on how to access your podcast because they're actively listening to podcasts. Mm -hmm. So to complement, I would say they go hand in hand. But for me, I like to advertise, and I asked you for this before we started recording, mm -hmm. advertise other podcasts be a guest on other podcasts. You're doing that right now. Mm -hmm. um, but be where other podcasts are and mm -hmm. connect with other podcasters who do something similar to you. Mm -hmm. You're not a threat to them and they're not a threat to you. You can work mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. and build your community by by reaching out to somebody who does something similar to what you do. Mm -hmm. Offer value. Offer to come on their show. Offer to help somebody sell a book about something along the topic of your podcast. Right, mm -hmm. have them on and let them promote their book. Whatever that is that you can help advertise your podcast on a podcast app will definitely help to go back to your Facebook group and build your community more because you're you're using two things, not just social media. Right. So that'd be one thing I'd say. And you're you're starting your Facebook from scratch, right? From the very beginning. With right. Yeah. Okay. Did you yeah, have any have... kind of audience before that? No. Okay. We have 88 followers on our Facebook page and a hundred and I don't know, 20 on our Facebook group. So, okay. So in there, what I would suggest to you then is I would look at your Facebook followers and people in your group or liking your Facebook page for your podcast. Instead of looking to them as listeners, I would kind of look to them as somebody who can evangelize or promote your podcast for you. Mm -hmm. Kind of like your street team. Right. Okay. So give them the resources to promote your show. But don't okay. go, don't always go to them to ask them to listen because if they're already listening, they're over here on the app listening. You don't need to tell them to go to the app because they're already there. Right. You want to talk to the people who are not listening. Mm -hmm. So if you have a topic about, you had episode six was about ghosts. Mm -hmm. Right. So if I would be in any kind of group that talks about ghosts. Yeah. Right. And be in there mm -hmm. and just be listening to the conversation, participate in the community around mm -hmm. ghosts. And then when the topic comes up and they're like, I'm looking for a great podcast about ghosts mm -hmm. without being advertising and spammy. 
you are hearing right. the conversation and you might even get more ideas about your pod for your podcast, but you're part of the community. Mm -hmm. And then the one thing you can do, which is really kind of cool, find a group around your topic, like a Facebook group mm -hmm. on folklore, reach out to the owner of the group, the Facebook group or an admin and say, mm -hmm. hi, my name is Vanessa. I have a new podcast and I would love to have you as the owner of this Facebook group, which I love come on my show and talk about your group. Because the okay. Facebook group owner now is going to come on and talk about their Facebook group on right. your show around folklore. And then they're going to want to promote your episode that you had them on a guest as. Right. So you can kind of get around the rules of no promotion in a Facebook group by just right. inviting the group owner to come on your show. Yeah, that's a very interesting now they're going to want to promote you, right? Mm -hmm. And you're in the group with a community of people who love folklore. Mm -hmm. And if they ever knew you had a podcast, they would love it. Right. And in, in your personal Facebook, as you're interacting with people, make sure it says podcaster, you know, in the name of your podcast, mm -hmm. in, in somewhere around you. So if people click on your image. They're like, oh, she has a podcast. Right. Yeah. Right. It should be right up there as you're talking to people mm -hmm. and as you're involving it because you're not selling anything. You're not being spammy in the, in the Facebook group. Mm -hmm. But anybody that interacts with you clicks on you on Facebook. And they're like, she has a podcast? And then they click <laughs> right through to yeah. the podcast. Great way to do that. Okay. Yeah. So that's one way to, I think, for on a Facebook or Instagram, any of those things, is to just be active in the community. And then interaction we talked about mm -hmm. with your audience is if anyone, anyone at any time reaches out to you as a listener, interact with them right away. Right. Don't wait. Because the beautiful thing about having 88 followers on, on Facebook in your group or having a smaller audience is you can interact with them in a genuine way that you can't mm -hmm. do when you have 10,000 followers. Right. There's no way you're going to keep track of 10,000 people. Mm -hmm. 88, pretty doable. If right. someone reaches out to you right now and says, Vanessa, I love your podcast. Then we can respond quickly. And have mm -hmm. the conversation. And just think, think of it this way. You walk into a room, Vanessa, and there's 88 chairs set up, and every every chair is full. There's somebody there, 88 people in the room. You walk up to the microphone, you look out over the crowd of 88 people and go, oh, there's not a thousand people here. Mm -hmm. Well, this isn't really worth my time. I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. 88 people showed up for you, and they love you, and they love your show. They can't wait to hear what you're going to say next. Mm -hmm. And you looked over the crowd and went, eh, didn't meet my expectations. Right. It's only 88. There's only 25. There's only five. There's only one person here. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to give up. Somebody showed up for you. Yeah. Out of all of the things they could be doing in life today, Netflix, movies, music, everything in life that they could take them away from your show, they chose you. So what is your measure of success? I guess, for your podcast, when are you going to know that you're on the right track? How do you measure it yourself? Yeah, I don't know. You know, I, I've seen that question asked a lot on podcasting forums where people ask, like, what does a successful podcast look like? And a lot of people will respond. And I like this, this response. Um, they'll say, as long as you keep getting better and you keep growing, even if it's just one listener per show, as long as you're just getting better then you're, you know, you're, you're successful as long as you, you're growing your audience every single time, even if it's incrementally, that's still growth. So, um, I, I like that idea because I think that when you're putting so much pressure on yourself about numbers, what number is it that you need to get to, to be a successful podcaster that, I mean, it's good to have goals. Don't get me wrong. It is very good to have goals and, and set goals, but I also think that putting so much pressure on yourself and saying, I'm not successful until I hit 500 subscribers on my YouTube channel. Um, you know, that, that can just be very discouraging because sometimes it can be a slow process. And so celebrating small wins, I think is really important, just as important as setting, you know, larger goals. So I don't know. I, I haven't actually set larger goals in terms of audience numbers for myself yet. Um, that is something that I, I need to look at. I, 
up until this point is mostly just been just building the foundation. And that has been my primary focus. Um, and now I think the focus is to continue building a good foundation, but also to start on more of the promotion elements and trying to build the audience a little bit more, um, or a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> that would, that would be great. Awesome. Yeah. So again, like getting on podcasts as guests, mm -hmm. um, connecting with other podcasts, sharing podcasts back and forth, finding other podcasts that are like yours and being part of their community. Those are all great ways to kind of get you out there so people know about you. Mm -hmm. um, and then it just, again, around your podcast is how would someone find your podcast if they did not know who you are or the right. name of your show? How would they find you? So a good example for you, my podcast is called the How to Podcast Series. So pretty evident what I'm talking about. I'm right. not talking about <laughs> plants or fixing your car. I'm talking about how to podcast. It's right in the name, right? I had mm -hmm. a gentleman in England, uh, went on his phone and went on Google and typed in how to podcast. And, and your podcast showed up. came up, yeah. <laughs> right? So mm -hmm. it's pretty obvious what I do. So make sure for a listener who's listening as well, um, and I love the name of your podcast, but make sure that you have something searchable in the name right. of your show that doesn't need to be explained to someone because no one's going to sit there and type in something that's uh, related to your show. And then you're going to show up at their doorstep and go, oh, I just want to clarify a, this, 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 this. And then, oh, thanks. Random right. person who just showed up at my house. So they, you know, I'm just I read looking, that a lot. Right? I read that a lot because of podcasters often come up with like really fun, creative idea names for their podcast. But then like it's not searchable. Right. And especially if it like is a weird spelling and you misspell it then it's not findable. And so that was frustrating for me because I'm one of those people who likes abstract names and I really like not having it being like super clear. I want it to, you know, be a little bit mystifying, but it had to be very clear in how if someone typed in folklore that my podcast would come up. So that was, um, there was a lot of debate. I changed the name a lot prior to uh, coming right? up with Fabric yeah. of Folklore. And my aunt, I had, I came up with my, 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 the name of my podcast and, um, I had bought the domain name and my, my aunt was like, I don't like that name. I feel like it sounds like you are making quilts. <laughs> and I was, and I was like, well, too bad. The domain name is already bought. So right. I love it. And just like, um, when an author writes a book, they'll have the title of their book and then they'll have thick colon. As go, and then they go into like a description about the book, what mm -hmm. it's about, right? So you can always add that to your name as well mm -hmm. if you're finding that it's not being found. Right. So the fabric of folklore, find out where the stories began or behind the stories that everyone knows. You know, mm -hmm. something along the lines like, oh, it's about stories, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's right. interesting because I might type in stories. In this, mm. in, those are the searchable words or put right. them in your description for right. your podcast. Yeah. Or in your podcast titles, right? Exactly. So if yes. Vanessa Rogers is on my podcast. Don't just say Vanessa Rogers is on my podcast. But what about the conversation? Would I be searching for? Mm -hmm. Especially yeah. if there are new a newer guest who doesn't mm -hmm. really have a following, right? If you had, um, I don't know, Beyonce on your podcast, that's pretty easy to find, right? Yeah. But <laughs> Dave Campbell might not be the most searchable word ever, so. Maybe yeah. you want to have something in there about the topic of what we talked about with their name. Right. Even better than just their name. Right? Yeah. So our first episode was all about trolls and hidden folk. So mm -hmm. it was a, an author who writes children's folktale stories primarily. And um, she primarily spoke about Norwegian folktale stories and about trolls specifically. And also like hidden folk include um, gnomes and fairies and things like that. Uh, so, but yes, that we included that type of thing in the, in the subject. I don't know who all is typing in troll, uh, <laughs> in their search engines, but hopefully we'll come up. <laughs> right. So there's another Facebook group you should be hanging around is anybody that talks about that topic. Right. right? Yeah. And just go in there and be like, hi, everyone. Uh, you know, hey, just, uh, wanted to check out the community and see what's going on here. 
And yeah. then as people start talking and they're like, I wish there was a podcast that talked about, you know, right. you could be like, hey, you know, you can go <laughs> in there and have a con- conversation with somebody. So that's a great way to do that. Um, we talk about uh, your interaction with listeners and make sure that they, uh, when they do reach out, that you uh, respond to them. That's really good at the beginning stages. But mm-hmm. what do you have in place in addition to Facebook? So that if I'm a, as a listener, I want to reach out to you, that I have a way to contact you through the website. What what is the things you have? Yeah, you can comment on all of our blog posts and all of our episodes. Um, you can also there is a contact button. Um, at the I believe it at at the bottom of the website where you can contact us and email us. There is also a place on our um website where you can ask to be a, a guest. We haven't had anyone ask to be a guest on from the website yet uh but um there is a place where you can contact us directly and then also you know we're on youtube because we're a video podcast as well as a, a, um an audio podcast on the regular pa- platforms um and so you can comment we've been getting interaction on youtube probably more than on other places awesome and have you set up your youtube um playlist to become an actual podcast on youtube have you done that i don't know that is now something new on on youtube they actually have across the top different categories and one of them yeah. is podcasts now so all Probably. you do is take your playlist yeah and you change it to a podcast identifier uh-huh. and then youtube will be pushing them out as podcasts oh well i'll have to look i'll have to look okay. to see if i did that it did take us a while to um they have a new thing on YouTube that I wasn't familiar with. If you're a new uh, channel, you have to be verified before yes. you can put up links, yes. clickable links. And so um, you have to like verify with your face or I think they have some other uh, things. The first time I tried to verify with my face, I did it kind of in a dark room. And so it, it denied me <laughs> access because I guess <laughs> I thought it was like a a robot yeah. but <laughs> anyway so be in a bright room and so if your links are not showing up on your original on your new youtube channel that's likely that's what's why. happening yeah good point mm-hmm. i'm glad you brought that up yeah i one of my podcasts i'm just setting that up as well and i went with like i think it's like a three month or something period of time that they kind of put you in like this little right. time out <laughs> basically mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. they watch you and then eventually they verify you're a real person and then we go so i went that way with mine but yeah. yeah, good point though. Very well done. Um, because the one thing I have on my pod, all my websites for my podcast is a speak pipe, uh, link and it's a little microphone and you click it and you can leave a voice message right on my website, which oh, then cool. I get an email then. So it'll say Vanessa Rogers email. Vanessa Rogers left you a voice message on speak pipe. I can hit play right in the email and I can listen or I can download it. And what I do is I download your message and I bring it into my podcast. So it's like oh. having this that's like having listener voicemail. Yeah. Bring it into your show. And what happens then? Again, we talk about interaction with your audience. You have it Find on your it. YouTube channel? It's on my on my website. On your website. Okay. Yeah. Right. And is it underneath like each one of your episodes or where are you placing it? Right on the main page. Right when you show up on my page, it'll be like, okay. Hi, my name is blah blah blah. And then there's a microphone. It's and actually it's something free. that we've been talking about doing is um having a place to collect stories uh, mm. like folk tales and kind of being a place to be an archive and um kind of connecting with some academics that might have some research that they might be wanting to look for as well and having Beautiful. a place for them to okay. you know help promote us as like a place for them to leave voicemails and archive yeah. this really cool information as well and then also maybe that would be able to translate into some sort of, you know, bonus episode podcast where people can just, you know, play a bunch of different cool folk tales from different places. Beautiful. Um, but yeah, I like that idea and that that um that's a great idea to put a, a voicemail element on there. Yeah, so the free version gives you at the time of recording this, the free version gives you ninety seconds of of, okay. uh, of recording time for your guests to leave a message. And then um like I said it's a plug in yeah, it's a plugin that just drop it on your website. Um, it's free to sign up. And um, it just gives you that chance to have audio messages, which think of it as a listener. I leave you a voice message. And then the next episode comes up. 
and uh, you you release an episode, and there I am on the podcast as a listener. And I'm right, like, that's me. I'm on yeah. Vanessa's show. That's my cool. question or my comment, my thoughts, my story, my episode idea, whatever that I left a message. Now I'm on the podcast. Yeah, everyone, everyone, I'm on a <laughs> podcast. Right? Yeah, that's amazing for your listener because you are just showing that if you reach out to me, I will respond. Right. And that will that ratchets up your engagement with your audience right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great so, idea. Because I had a, a gentleman come on my reached out to me through my website when we came on Zoom together. He's looking at me, he's pointing at me, and I'm like, "Welcome to the How to Podcast series. My name is Dave." He's like, "It's really you. You're the guy. You're the guy I listen to in my ears all the time because I did the intro, right?" And he was just blown away. He thought, "Oh, this, I don't know. This is kind of weird." <laughs> but then he was like, that opened the door. He's like, episode this, episode this. I like to guess for this. You taught me this, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's like, you're a real person. Yeah. Vanessa, you're a real person. Wow. Like, like people <laughs> love that kind of interaction. So anytime that you can have a face-to-face -face with somebody, mm -hmm. um, one thing I would suggest for all your guests, ask them to listen to their episode. Just okay. listen to your episode. It's like, oh. Okay, yeah, I will. I will listen to my episode. It's going to come out. I'll send you the links. But I would really appreciate if you listen to your episode and mm -hmm. let me know how you thought how how you thought the episode went. I'd like to get the feedback from you after you've heard your episode on what you thought of the episode. Uh -huh. What you've just done is open the door for your guest to respond back to you in the future to keep that door open. And right. then they're going to come back to you and say, Vanessa, I love the show. I loved your questions. They're really good. Well produced. Thank you for having me on the show. I have had several of our guests start, join the community, and they're starting to be more of the community conversation starters, which beautiful, is nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. And the one thing you can offer to your guests that join your community is because we have this relationship, I would love to let you in the community talk about your next book, talk about where you're going to be signing your books or a special offer you have because you vetted them. Mm -hmm. So it's okay for them to promote. Yeah. Because you know who they are and you right. trust them. So go ahead and talk to the audience in that group. Uh, you have permission to do that because you've been on my show. Compared to somebody else who comes in the group and you're like, no, 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 no. I don't right. know who you are. Right? I know who you are. So go ahead and you can promote. So that's a great way to include them. And then your listeners can talk to them directly. Right. And yeah. you're not even in the room. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great I like way. that idea. A great way to build that. Um, the other thing we were talking about was monetization. Um, what are your thoughts around this? What kind of things are you thinking about doing? So I'll be honest. The, the, originally, when I started the podcast, my goal was not to monetize the podcast itself. I wanted to use it more of as a marketing tool in the future um, because I am writing. So I, I'm not a published author, but I have written multiple books for my children. Um, and I have and so I recorded them as audiobooks. I kind of did it because I thought that they would be more into listening to audiobooks if they were part if they were the main characters. And so I and then I had um my son help with the recording. So I had him record certain like bits and I added his little voice to the nice. story. Oh, and it was really on. nice. He really loved it and the, the kids loved my stories and so um my son started asking for a specific story. He wanted he and his sister to go to the Amazon River, and he like wanted all these like kind of specific things. And I was like, you know, I've been meaning to actually write a real book series for that it is around you guys. And so I I had because I have a you know, a cultural and travel mindset. I really wanted the book series to be for kids of. My my son is seven, so I was thinking slightly older because in general they say when you're writing books, children like to read about kids who are slightly older than than Smart. themselves. Smart, yep. Um, and so, uh, it would be about them traveling to different places, and it would be about a folkloric legend that they are kind of in the middle of. So there'd be fantasy elements of it as well, and they're going to be like solving some sort of mystery type thing. And so that was kind of where I started in 
this journey because I was going to write this book series and I am, I'm writing this book series for, for, um, to be published. And I wasn't sure if it would be picked up by publishers or not. And I still wanted to put it out there, even if it wasn't being picked up by a, you know, a, a full blown publishing company. I wanted to have the opportunity to um, promote it and market it myself. Mm -hmm. And so I was kind of thinking of it, the podcast as a way to, you know, market my books. Yes. Is because they go along hand in hand. Right. Um, and the audiences are slightly different, obviously, because the podcast is for adults, but adults usually buy the books for children. So, right. <laughs> um, Anyways, oh, uh, so yes, my, <laughs> what a great idea. Oh, <laughs> anyway, so my, um, but now I would really like to have some income at least to pay for the podcast itself, you know, pay for elements of the podcast, the websites, the, you know, yeah. is it, it's not free to do podcasting. It, you know, it takes an investment and, um, I would like to be able to pay my producer what he is is worth <laughs> um and so uh these i would like it to just pay for itself and then um so we have been i've been looking at different things um patreon is obviously where most pa podcasters start i think yeah. um and they offer little things um they offer extra bonuses to those uh people who who pay them X number of dollars per month yeah. or per project. Um, I haven't decided if we're going to go the Patreon route. Y you can also put on your website, like buy me a coffee or, you know, subscribe to monthly just to support my podcast. A lot of times people want things in return. I don't really know. I haven't really completely thought through it all. We also have been talking about partnering with publishing companies and having um, authors come on and speak, uh, do like readings mm -hmm. and um, charging maybe a very minimal fee for hosting the podcast and maybe um, the, the author reading and then splitting it with the, the author, uh, splitting the proceeds with the author. I don't know um, what that would look like. We haven't, you know, found a publishing company that, that, um, we're just in the beginning phases of thinking through these types of things. But um, I, I, knew, I do know that some people are leaving Patreon, which is why I was kind of starting to think about if I actually wanted to go the Patreon route because I think they're charging more interest, not interest. I think they're taking like 12% if you are yeah, a yeah. larger podcast. So um, some people are not super happy with the platform as much as they had been in the past. And so... I don't know. I'm just thinking through all these things and not really sure where I'm landing. <laughs> yeah. So the one big thing is, do you tell your audience in your episodes that you are looking for support? Not yet. No, because okay. we haven't set up, we don't have anything set up to do that yet. So I am going to, once we have figured out if we're going to go the Patreon route or if we are going to just set up something via our website where you can just pay PayPal and just be a supporter and um, give a monthly fee or whatever. Okay, so one tip. landed on something yet. One tip for your website, because I would probably send people to your website for everything. Okay. Right. Um, don't send them to Patreon. Send them to your website, because your website's right. always going to be there. And then on your website, make a tab across the top. You have like about me and the podcast and all that kind of stuff, right? Have a tab that says support. Mm -hmm. And then... Whatever you choose to use, if it's Patreon, and then you said, mm, I'm going to go over here because something's new and shiny. I want to go try this. Mm -hmm. You have all your episodes where you've told everybody to go to Patreon. Mm -hmm. But now you don't have Patreon. You have right. yeah. Vanessa something, right? So exactly, you want to move. Yeah. So now instead of telling everybody to, okay, don't go there anymore. Go over here. Just always tell them to go to support at your website. And then you can change support to be whatever you want it to be in the future. Mm -hmm. And it still says support. Yeah. Right. So that's one thing I would suggest at the very beginning is just get your, your audience used to going to the tab support. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't mention it on the podcast, they're on your website and they'll see the support button. They'll click it and go, Oh, this is what I need. This is mm -hmm. what I'm looking for. And you can communicate there, mm -hmm. even if you don't say it publicly for the next few episodes. Right. So have that there. 
just a button on your website that says support. And then for me, I tried Patreon. I didn't really want to go down the route of having extra content for an audience that pays for it because it I don't know like have enough lot. time, right? <laughs> it so does seem lot. like, yeah. So I went to, I, I put on the Buy Me a Coffee and uh-huh. it sat there for months. No one touched it until one day somebody bought me 10 coffees and I'm like, at five bucks a piece. And I showed my wife, I'm like, oh my gosh, somebody actually clicked the link. I fell off my chair. I'm like, what the heck? This is amazing. Yeah. Right. And they, because it was there. Yeah. Now to my, I need to do a better job of telling people it's there, Mm -hmm. but it was there. At least it was there. Yeah. Right. So the one thing I would do is on, at the end of your podcast episodes, make sure you have you as the end. Cause again, people come to your podcast, not for your guest. They come because of you and they stay because of you. So mm-hmm. make sure at the end of your episode, when you're all done, you say goodbye to your guest. Do a little thing at the end that talks about what's coming up or your website or your new book you're working on or um, how to support the show. Mm-hmm. And have these kind of things at the end that send people to your website. Yeah. Right? Again, don't send them to your Facebook group. Send them to your website, which has a link to your Facebook group. Right. Always to the website because you own it. Mm-hmm. It's yours. Right. Right. Patreon, you don't own. Facebook, you don't own. TikTok, you don't own. Instagram, you don't own. Those, you're just, you're just living there, rent and renting space there. Mm-hmm. Send them to your website because that's who you own that. And then you can change anything on your website anytime you want and keep your audience. So mm-hmm. an email sign up sheet, you want people to connect with you on the show. Make sure you have a way for people to sign up and you can send them an email once a month, maybe. Mm-hmm. And then you give them all the details about the show. Um, people can buy you a coffee or support your Patreon or whatever your support platform is by mm-hmm. clicking your support tab. You have them on your website. Now they're coming to you directly. Right. That's probably make it easy for them to do so. And I just want to jump back to something that you said about writing this book and the series, series of books. Of, okay. Series. series of books. Okay. So talk about cute factor to have your kids recorded. And what I would love to hear from you. Remember we talked about a bonus episode. Mm-hmm. Imagine coming to the microphone, Vanessa, and saying, Hey, everyone, this is Vanessa from the podcast. Thank you for listening to my show. Hope you're enjoying the guests. I'd love to get your feedback. Now head over to my website. And let, let me know what you're thinking about the show. Today, I just wanted to share a little bit about one of my dreams. One of my dreams is to become an author. And mm-hmm. this is what I'm working on. And everything you told me about how you're writing it, the kids' voice and characters, and then give me like 10 seconds of the recording. <laughs> of the cuteness just a little taste yeah and everyone here's a little bit of the here's a little bit of what we're working on it's mm-hmm. rough it's just it's just for fun mm-hmm. but i want you to hear how cute this is right and as a listener who loves folklore and now to hear your kids on the microphone bringing the cute level up to a thousand <laughs> i would love to know that you're going to become an author do you know why because i was there before you had your book Right. And I followed your journey through your podcasts as you brought all these great guests on to talk folklore. But I want to hear an update on the book. And when you have your book done after your 20, 30th episode, your book is done of your podcast. You can go to a publisher and say, hi, everyone, I want to get this published. And they say to you, oh, Vanessa, you need a a community. You need what? Tell me your audience. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm in 70 countries with my podcast. I've had. 35 guests who have been on my show and give me ratings and reviews on my podcast. I've done this number of episodes and I have a Facebook community. I have this, I have my website and your publisher is going to be like, we want the book. We want to publish you (laughs) because you've done all the work behind the scenes instead of showing up on their doorstep with a book saying, please, sir. Right. Can I have a book, please? You're like, no, no, I already have my community. Do you want, do you want me to bring my community? Because they're right here with me. Yeah. Would you, like to, would you like to have my book? Yes, will be the answer. Because you've done all the <laughs> work in the b- behind the scenes. <laughs> but promote the book. I know it doesn't give you money right away, but promote mm-hmm. the book. Take us on a journey of writing the book. Give us some cute, for sure. Throw a little cute in there because your audience will love it. Yeah. Continue with the Facebook group. Continue all those things. Throw some way of people supporting you on your website so that it lives there. 
24 hours a day, 365 days a year. It's always there. And just get you people used to hearing you say, hi, everyone. It's Vanessa. I want to give you some updates. My podcast cost me $30 a month to do. Mm-hmm. If you can help me in any way, go to my website, click the support button, and I would love for you to help me with the show. And here's what I'm going to do with the money. If you give me this money to help me with the show, I'm going to give it to my producer. I'm mm-hmm. going to get a better microphone. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to take my kids for ice cream. <laughs> Tell them exactly what you're going to do with the money. Right. Yeah. And anyone listening, because you, you never know who's listening, they might be going, you know what? Vanessa needs to take her kids for ice cream. I'm going to give her some money. Here <laughs> right. But you just tell them what you're going to do with it. Yeah. And people will stay for you. Vanessa. You're coming for you. Mm-hmm. So they're already there. So just give, make it as easy as possible for them to reach out to you and as easy as possible for them to support you. Right. Take away every barrier and you'll see the interaction that you're asking for. You'll see the monetization. I do have a question about tracking stats. So that's one thing that we haven't been doing quite at this point because um, we're not going through like a podcasting platform um, like Podbean or Buzz, Buzzsprout. It's just all RSS feed through the website. And so I don't yet have a, a, a means. I, do you know of any plugins or anything for if you do it straight from your website to track your your stats because I I am it's not easy to like at, at this point we have to go to individually like yeah. what does it look like on YouTube what does it look like on Apple Podcasts what does it look on like on you know it's not collated right so there is an advantage to having it hosted on a site mm-hmm. um. And there is a free option, which is I have four of my shows on this free option. It used to be called Anchor and it's called Spotify for podcasters, I believe now. Right, um, yeah. And it doesn't cost you anything to get set up. So you can actually take your RSS feed and put it there, and then you'll get some basic stats. that will help you know what people are listening on. Is it an iPhone? Is it an Android phone? What country they're in? Mm-hmm. Basic information, not like super amazing stats because... That I would say you're going to need to pay for that kind of monthly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I have three shows on Buzzsprout and four shows on Anchor, formerly known as Anchor, Spotify for podcasting. So I have seven tall together. So, so there's a there's a way to do it for free uh-huh. if you if you're looking to do that. And it's simply taking your address, your RSS address that you're mm-hmm. talking about, and, and just giving it to the other site, and then you setting up your podcast and all the different players. It's a little bit of work, but it's yeah. They've already work, been set right? up. They've already yeah. been set up on all the different players. We just don't have the place to follow the stats. Right. So that's be that'd be one solution is to to move to migrate over to something that offers the stats mm-hmm. in a more in a more condensed way. You can also then just again follow the links and and look at each one individually. Mm-hmm. It's a lot more work, but again, yeah. that's that's the price of not paying for a regular monthly mm-hmm. host. Is yeah. that's all included. And that's part of the benefit of having a paid host, right. whoever you choose, is they do the work for you. So you're either going to pay for it with money or time. So it sounds like you're paying with it with your time right now to do all yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, we're not really work. looking at it very much right now. <laughs> yeah. But yes, yeah. So it's more that's time another, investment. The other side of that is then to have great interaction with the listeners you do have mm-hmm. through your Facebook group. Uh, through interaction with your audience through an email list, that's those are real numbers. Mm-hmm. Again, everything you see as a stat. Um, so I'll give you an example. I have one one of my podcast episodes of a music podcast, and I have one episode. Usually, I get about a hundred listens of every episode. I have one episode with twenty two thousand listens. Wow. Now, what happened was Samsung it has an app. They also do like refrigerators and TVs and stuff. Mm -hmm. So you can actually listen to my podcast on your fridge, which is crazy. Um, But they did some kind of thing and they pushed my podcast out to a bunch of people. Now, I don't (laughs) think any of these people actually listened, but 22,000 people got my episode. (laughs) So it shows in my stats, which made me like, again, fall off my chair, that 22,000 people would listen to one episode. But then my next episode, I had 79. So it's like, wait a minute. Okay. Yeah. So, right. So those numbers are a little bit 
they're they're a ballpark. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't worry too much about the specifics of those numbers. Mm -hmm. And when somebody comes to you and says to you, um, I'll be a guest if you can show me your numbers. My response back to them, Vanessa, is I'm a new podcaster. I'm just starting. But I promise you, I will promote your show. I will give you a great interview. I will support you as a guest. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've read your book. I know your stuff. And I know I can help you as a guest on my show. I would mm -hmm. love to have you on. Because I had that request early in my podcasting days. Mm -hmm. And the person came on and that was the first question. Tell me your numbers. And I'm like, my numbers are small. I'm new. But I promise mm -hmm. you, you're gonna, never going to have another episode like mine. Because I'm going to work harder than you've ever had on any other show. And mm -hmm. I've listened to you on other shows. And I know I can do a better job. Mm -hmm. So I promise to do that for you. And they said, you know what? I don't care about the numbers. Let's go. Awesome. So have confidence in what you do because you're doing a great job. And let that be people calling you to be on your show instead of you having yeah. to go find them. It'll happen. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm I'm really pleased with how it's going so far. I, I think the guests have been um, pleased with the interviews. Uh, one of my guests said she felt really comfortable like we were just having coffee. So I felt yeah. like that was a really nice compliment. Um, but I, like I said, I think that that is – Probably my greatest strength is that I am pretty good at putting people at ease and having a, a conversation um, and just, you know, continuing the conversation. Remember. I'm still there. It froze up on me. Okay. <laughs> yes, it froze for a minute. I was like, oh, no, what's happening? <laughs> you know, my very first episode, my one-year-old um, went and turned off the router <laughs> he was outside with my husband and my, and my husband didn't see my one year old doing it and he turned off the router. So the whole, the whole episode we had just, I mean, it, that part was recorded, but I had to come back on after we figured out what had happened. So, you know, first episode in, we, <laughs> we had it. some fun bumps. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So like I was saying, um, remember I was saying to ask your list, your, your guests to listen to their, your show. Mm -hmm. By asking them to do that, you just gained a new listener, and you want to get you want to grow your listeners, right? Right. So you're talking to a listener potentially. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm talking to you. I hope that you would listen to this episode of yeah. the How to Podcast series because you're on it. Yeah. Right. I would love for you to hear your own episode. I will. So say I it's just a little gained... embarrassing sometimes to watch yourself talk on on uh, <laughs> on things. Right? Um. I've been told that my, my laugh is very recognizable. I don't know always if that's a good thing or a bad thing, <laughs> but, yeah. um, but yes, I will go back and watch myself. I love listening to your show because you have these cute little moments where you kind of, you laugh or you, I can tell you're smiling when you're talking through the microphone, even when I can't see you on camera and I'm just listening uh -huh. because you have this little giddiness to your voice when your guest says something and you're like, you jump in, you're like, oh, really? Oh, and you're like so excited to talk about that thing they just said. Yeah. That's so cool because that's you. Yeah. No no one else can do that. Only you can do that. And that's what's so cool about your podcast is it's you. Yeah. That is awesome. And that's what people are going to come back for. So, yeah. Well, thank you. That's a nice it. compliment. <laughs> See? Well, keep going. Don't stop. Again, let's, let's promote uh, your show again here near the end. Uh, thank you for making time to be on the Hotel Podcast series. Please come back. Yeah, definitely. I want updates. And I have the Living the Next Chapter podcast for authors. Okay. So open door. <laughs> come talk about your book when you're ready to do so. Love okay. to have you on there. Um, but let's go again. Let's share again where the podcast is, how people can follow you. Like, so it's share. Fabric of Folklore. It's www.fabricoffolklore.com. We are on Facebook. As a page, and we are, we also have a group page. It's called Fabric of Folklore Community Page. So that's where you can um, go and interact as someone who is just interested in having a conversation about folklore. It doesn't necessarily even have to be about specific episodes. It can just be things that you find cool that you have found about folklore. Um, and then we are also on YouTube. The the podcast is a uh, a video podcast as well. So I think primarily our focus has been in pushing the, the YouTube channel. Um, and, and again, it's just the fabric of folklore. If you look that up on, on YouTube, I think it should be coming up at this point. <laughs> um, 
And we've had six episodes come out so far. I think we've recorded ten. So have, we have um, – so once once a week it, it comes out every Tuesday, usually yes. around 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. Beautiful. Awesome. And then you're going to eventually have on your website a support button so people right. can support yes. the show. That's coming, right? That is um, coming. And you can always reach out and leave feedback as well for Vanessa and, and let her know. And yeah, if you emails. know of someone that you want to have on our get uh, on our show, please let me know. If you are a folklorist <laughs> and uh, want to come on our show, please contact me. That you can there's a a button on the website you can just message us and let us know and we will get back in touch with you. And for those that aren't really quite listening to our conversation, we didn't say fake we didn't say fake florist. We said folk Florist. Folk just florist. Everyone knows. Right, yes, exactly. Folklorist. Right? I actually had to look that up. I didn't know what a folklorist was before I started this podcast. There were a lot of things I didn't know about folklore See? before I started this podcast. I thought f- folklore and folk tales were the same, and they're not. Just in case you were wondering, mm. they're not. Folklore is the overarching umbrella of everything that it encompasses culture. So basically, it's a lot of people describe it as the cultural DNA. So it, it encompasses um, your standard folk tales encompasses mythologies, ex- um, rituals, customs, dress, language, uh, writing style. There's a lot of elements that make up what your culture is, and all of that is encompassed by by folklore. So um, that is something that I ha- didn't understand before even going into this. Uh, so uh, you learn a lot through the process. <laughs> Remember how we talked about bonus episodes? You just mm-hmm. did one. Yeah. Do that. Do that episode. Say what you just did. Do another one. Just do that again. Uh-huh. And share that with your audience to bring them along with you and say, hey, everyone, this is what, this is what I found out. Well, I do have a blog post and I, we are recording all of the blog posts. So that, that is, it's not being on, it's not on the podcast platform, but it is audio recorded on, on the website. Okay. So you can Good. just hear it. So I don't know if that should be, or should, do you feel like we should take our blog posts and just, Put them as bo- as little bonus podcasts. That mm-hmm. might be a good idea. You want those little bonus bonus content? Have mm-hmm. your interviews do them really well. But if you already have the content, repurpose it and share it. Because again, if I'm driving in my car on the way to work, I'm not reading your blog because I'm driving. Mm-hmm. So if I can listen to your blog, great. Mm-hmm. And for those who love blogs, they can read your blog. You're serving two community members at the same time. Mm-hmm. So the content's already there. Just put a voice to it. Send it out there and it's, and then point people back to the blog. If you like this episode, this is right from my blog. Here's a link to my blog. Sign up today. Back to yeah, the website. Yeah, that's a great idea. Back I to love the that. website. Okay. <laughs> there you go. So you have a listener in Canada and I'm, I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm going to look f- at every tree now and see if I can find a troll. And ghosts are going to be all around me as I look behind me. Um, so your podcast telling is you who to marry. See? That that right? ghost specifically told someone who they needed to go marry. Wow, that's specific, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you're interested in any folklore, you want a great podcast to listen to, go check out uh, the podcast Fabric of Folklore with my guest co-host today. Vanessa, Thanks so thank much. You so much for making time. It's great to have you. Thank you. 